set series. Uh, and it's my privilege uh, to have my good friend, Pastor Ange, here as we have a conversation and a bit of a dialogue uh, around uh, reset. Now, you preached a message uh, back in uh, 2020 on the 14th of February, actually. Wow. F- Valentine's Day. Can you remember? Wow. No, no I have um, no idea. So <laughs> I don't remember what I did last week. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let me, let me refresh your memory. The message was called True Rest. And you were talking about how we can have rest uh, on all levels of our life, spiritually, uh, emotionally, and physically. Uh, And it was a message that resounded with me, and I know many others, um, to even this day, uh, I I, uh, meditate meditate on it and get a lot out of it. Uh, And it was talking about, yeah, how we do that on each uh, level of our lives. And that language is really familiar for us here at Civic. Um, We talk a lot about spirit, soul, body, that key understanding that we are a spirit being, we have a soul, which is our mind, will and our emotion, and we live in a body, it's our physical frame, and together we're this living being, which Genesis 2-7 talks about. Uh, and if that's maybe new for you, uh, or you just want a refresher on that kind of uh, content, um, you can jump online to our key messages, uh, and you'll find a series um, that we did a few years ago called Spirit, Soul, Body. How many years ago was it? We I want to say Spirit, it was 2014. Yeah, but right. that's just, I think I've got 14 on the brain. <laughs> so I could be making that up. But it's in the key messages. So you don't have to go through all the years. You just log on to that key messages and you'll be, a, be able to find it there. And it's just something that uh, is something that we prioritise here, trying to live spirit-led. Yeah. And, it's, and it's infiltrated our platform. It's infiltrated our, our lives. Uh, and it's a key understanding. Um, you know, when we Uh, accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. We know that our spirit is redeemed, but our soul and our body are unredeemed. And this constant fight, this struggle is real. (laughs) Yeah, very real. It's not easy to navigate. It's difficult. Um, And so I lay all of that groundwork because I want to dive into the key thought of our conversation today, which is how do you reset heading into this new year, 2022? How do you reset living holy. Not holy, like holy, (laughs) Um, though that will be a byproduct, but living holistically. How do we reset living uh, and taking care of our spirit, soul, body heading into a new year? Are you ready for this conversation? I am. I'm pumped. I'm really looking forward to it. That's good. That's really good. Because if you had said something different, that would have been really awkward. I would have just, you know, yeah. dismissed you. No, not really. We will have lots to talk about. Big topic. We won't be able to get to everything yeah. this morning. Um, but why don't we launch into spirit? So when we talk about spirit and those healthy habits that we want to practice on that sort of spirit level, we're talking about quiet time with God, journaling, devotions, prayer, worship, speaking in tongues, even pastoral care and spending time with like-spirited people. Now, you've uh, walked with Jesus for how lo- many years now? So, I grew up in church right. um, from a young age. I always remember going to church and church was a great experience um, I went with my whole family, um, but it probably wasn't until um, in my teenage years that I actually made um, and accepted um, Christ as Lord and Saviour and started that, I suppose, that individual journey. I'd known a lot about God, but it became personal for me um, as a teenager. But I think the great thing is we're lifelong learners with Jesus. We never get to that point where, you know, we accept him, but then we're on that sanctification um, process. So, I suppose I've, I've heard a lot about the Spirit and, and, and been on uh, that journey um, for a really long time. Um, I think the... I remember when Pastor Brennan first had the revelation about body, soul and spirit um, all those years ago, and it, I remember grasping and having that revelation for myself that I'm not just a spirit but I have a soul and body as well and you know growing up in church we talk a lot about spirit you know and and, um, learning from Jesus and living as Jesus did in that sanctification process but nowhere in my childhood well I only heard that message while I was probably in my early 30s never had I heard in church 
um, the conversation about the importance of the body and soul and spirit working together. Church only seemed to focus on the spirit. And um, like you said before, it's a thing that we constantly are still growing and learning in. How do we manage this body, soul, and spirit? Because there's different seasons of life we go through that um, we need to constantly find this balance between body, soul, and spirit and, you know, um, letting the spirit speak the loudest. But we also need the soul and the body as well to be working with the spirit. And so it's not something that we ever get to where we've got it, okay, I've got this balance right. I think it's a daily thing uh, that we need to find this balance between the body, soul, and spirit. And sometimes we'll need to focus on the soul more um, to um, then get in line with the spirit. They all are very interlinked. Um, The body impacts on the soul and spirit. The spirit impacts on the body and soul. And so we can't um, neglect one or the other. They all need to be working with one another. And I think having that revelation of body, soul, and spirit, and if you haven't yet listened to that series, do it. It will change your life. Um, But I think it's just a constant thing that we need to work through. And so coming back to the spirit, obviously as Christians, the spirit needs to be the one that is the loudest in our life. Yes, the cap- captain, the captain of our soul. Absolutely, our yeah. absolutely. In our mind um, is so, so key. And so for me, over my journey of life, what that looks like varies depending on the season, wow. what's going on. But for me to really, um, I suppose, centre myself every day mm-hmm is when I wake up, I want to be intentional that I start my day laying me down <laughs> and lifting Jesus up as, uh, as, as number one in my life. Um, so it starts off with thankfulness. Right. I think, you know, living a life of thankfulness mm. um, is a really good thing, thanking God for today. But then reminding myself that today is not about me. Right. Because it's so easy to slip into those habits of, all right, I've got this, God. I'm, I'm all good. I'm going to live today. Uh, so, like, giving him my day and saying, God, this is your day, not my day. Whatever you've got in it, yeah. you've given me enough strength. And that was a revelation I had from the Lord's Prayer a couple of years ago. It says, like, Jesus teaches us how to pray. And one of the things is, give me today my daily bread. He will provide me everything I need for today. Right. Not yesterday's strength, not tomorrow's strength, but all I need for today. And I also remind myself that this isn't my home, earth isn't my home, but to have a heavenly perspective, that whatever happens today, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, that this is just temporary and heaven is my home. And so I like to, in some ways, bring the soul uh, in line and make sure the spirit, it's kind of that centering um, to start my day. And then I generally... um, do a devotional at night time and have time of meditation, which, you know, some people go, meditation, ooh, that's ooh, <laughs> super sweet. Um, but I like to dwell on the same verse over and over. Yeah. I like to digest in some ways. And, um, well, yeah. and, and I think that's what meditation is. Like, yeah, that's I think right. It's, not, it's different to analysing. Analysing yeah. is trying to solve the problem. Right. Um, but meditation is just allowing that to wash over you over and over and rethinking and, and letting it, I guess, show its different colour and its different hues uh, and, and reveal itself, yeah. um, which you do with the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't just read the black words on a white page and just go, oh, I know the meaning of that. Like, there's, a, there's so much more depth to the Word of God. So spending time with Him, spending time with the Holy Spirit who's going to reveal that Word to you and your devotions, like all of that points to allowing your spirit to take charge and spirit to be in the lead. But in saying that, there's probably most days that there's a battle between my spirit and soul of spending time with God. Because you're doing well if it's just most days. I'm like every day. Yeah. <laughs> like coming to that time, there is a battle going on inside of me. Oh, but you could just watch um, that episode of Netflix 
that you're up to um, or go and watch something on TV or go and do something else. So it's not like it just comes, oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's what we do. But there's a battle every time coming even to God as Christians. Yeah. Um, there's that battle there of, oh, but I could do something else. My soul's and still there screaming for attention. Do you think that's, that's one of the reasons why? Because it doesn't sometimes necessarily feel productive in the moment. Like when you're doing, uh, oh, I'm going to not spend time with God because I'm going to do a load of washing. Like that's an immediate result where you see that yeah. those clothes were dirty, now they're clean and they're away. Whereas spending time with God doesn't have that outward productivity that those kind of tasks do. Um, but that's, again, not necessarily thinking with the mind of the spirit, is it? Because um, when you're spending time with God, it has this everlasting uh, result uh, and, it, and it actually empowers and positions you um, for the things of the spirit, not just the things of earth. And I think you're right too because we live in a world and society excuse me, <clears throat> um, where we want to be seen as productive and doing things and being intentional to spend that time with God, it's retreating, it's being quiet, it's being stillness, in the stillness, waiting on hearing God. And so it does have that potential to seem that way of, well, I'm not being productive. What is this actually doing? And that's why I think we even have to be more intentional of spending um, that time with God. But it's a battle every time. And I, don't, and I think it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, you still need to um, be aware that the soul's there and it's going to say, no, nah, you don't need to do that. Like, God still loves us. And he does. And it's not about religion. And I think that's the thing, like, you're no more holier for spending time with God. He still loves us exactly the same. Um, but it does take us deeper into him and get to know him more in the depths of his love for us and and relying on and never um, getting comfortable with that grace as well. And, and I think... Uh, when you were talking before, I think that points to being others focused as well. When you spend time with God, uh, it doesn't take you very long before you shift from being self focused, which is what soul and body are all about, um, to others focused, which is how we're meant to live our lives. Absolutely. And so it sort of has that ability to shift your focus and go, hang on, that's right, my day's not about me. Um, I'm aligning to what God wants, and God wants me to encourage somebody or to be there for somebody uh, or to talk to somebody about Jesus, uh, this is being like others focused, and which is one of those disciplines. It's true. And what, sometimes we can make it so complex, but all God has asked us to do is love God and love people. Like it's so simple, yet we can bring religion and rules into it, but that's all the Father has asked for us for today. Love me and love people. And it's, it's so easy. So I think we've got the spirit sorted. <laughs> Not really, but we've got we've opened up some dialogue there um, for us to how how do we live I guess spirit led how do we look after our spirit? Let's talk about the soul for a little bit. Um, so when we talk about soul, we're talking about self care, things that refresh you, meditation, mindfulness, positive relationships, counselling, healthy self talk. Would you add anything else to that list of soul habits that are good to? I guess, reset and to focus on heading into a new year. Kerry, you've done excellent homework to get well, that thank list. thank you. <laughs> I think our soul is, it, it's a, a brilliant thing because our soul is our feelings, our emotions, um, and they're really, really good things that help us express ourselves in life, part of our personality. Our personality sits within our soul and so... Although we want the spirit to be captain over our soul, our soul is still really important um, in our life to express ourselves. But it's finding that balance that our soul doesn't rule, that the spirit still comes in um, to rule. And I think in my experience growing up, um, especially growing up in church my whole life, I found um, just through religion again, was that try to avoid the soul. 
Because the soul's messy and the soul's yuck. And so if you just focus on the spirit, then all the stuff of the soul will just go away. But the truth is, in life, we're human and um, our souls carry stuff from our experience, from our childhood, growing up, um, and can be impacted by experiences that we've had from other people. And um, it impacts our our daily life. Sometimes we mightn't um, even know because we have a subconscious um, that we actually carry things. And sometimes that can impact on our life. And so my journey with the soul is I can't, I need to find this balance of loving my soul as well as my spirit. We can't neglect our soul because it's part of who we are. Although it is unredeemed, we've still got to love it and accept the person um, that we are. And we've got to be able to listen to what our soul is saying. And our soul and body seem to work um, together in that because when our soul isn't happy, when we've got stuff going on, It impacts on our bodies as well. And medical, you know, if you do any medical research, it will show you that uh, your wiring of your brain impacts on your body. Stress and anxiety um, can upset, you know, your heart, your um, stomach. uh, It's all interconnected. It's just incredible how God's put us all together. But what I've found is there are moments in my life where I have had to go and get counselling and I know for you personally as well, because we've got to deal with stuff in our soul to be able to continue on, even in our spiritual life, um, to grow and learn. And I found it such a humbling experience as well. As a Christian growing up, it was like, you know, we don't talk about anything of the, of the mental health realm or issues in the past. It was almost like, um, pray it away. You've got Jesus, pray it away, it's all God, good. And, and uh, you know, I think that's still in the church a little bit. If you've got issues, just pray it away. And we believe in a healing God. 100%. I'm not saying that God can't come in and, and heal those hurts from the past and those issues from the past. But um, I found it a humbling experience to actually go, and again, it comes back to, thankful for God's grace that in my brokenness, but actually going to sit with a psychologist and process my childhood experiences and see and listen to my soul and my subconscious um, and deal with those issues from the past. It's so painful and it is awful. And I think that's sometimes why we want to negate the soul and just pray it away because it's, it's messy, too it's hard. hard. I, don't want, I don't know if that was your experience as well. Yeah, definitely. It was something that was over, too overwhelming and in the yeah. too hard basket. And you just thought, I, and quite unknown. Um, I hadn't done counselling before. So it was this whole realm of what am I even going to expect? Um, what are they going to talk to me? I was probably a bit weary about how are they going to, um, yeah, what, what advice are they going to give me um, because I have a faith and that's really important to me and I don't want that advice to then have to conflict and have this inner conflict. Um, thankfully, I, fa- I found a, a Christian counsellor that worked for me. I understand that that's not always the case for everybody and you don't have to have a Christian counsellor, um, I think, as long as um, there's, there's not that internal conflict because that kind of negates the um, purpose of you going to counselling if you're dreading going to counselling um, each time. It's supposed to be a helpful thing. Um, but yeah, 100% um, in my journey with my counsellor, um, I found it um, a, a challenging journey, um, but uh, it changed me and uh, yeah. it, it, it helped give, myself, give my soul tools um, to settle so that my spirit then had a chance. Did you find that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I found also on my journey, there's times like I've seen a, a counsellor on and off over probably the last 15 years because there's things as we continue on our journey that keep coming up that we need to. So it's not like go to the counsellor once. That might be all you need is go to a counsellor once um, and that's all good. But we're lifelong learners and Life is a journey, so we can't go, okay, that's good now, but our soul is continuing to go on a journey as well as we're continuing to grow. And so 
it is a humbling experience, but I think also as Christians, I resisted at first because it made me kind of feel like it was a weakness. If I've got God, shouldn't I have my life together? Shouldn't I be able to do this alone with God? Um, and so it's actually a humbling experience to go, you know what? I, I don't have all my stuff together, um, but this is a good thing to go and process with a professional. And I think in church life, we need to normalise it. And there is so many, and I love that churches are getting on that board now of this is actually a really healthy thing. Like there's a lot of businesses, organisations now that it's part of their job um, that they go and see monthly a psychologist, um, counsellor to be able to process um, these things through life. And it's not a weakness, but it's actually something. And I found it so helpful in dealing with my soul, even though it's painful and it's um, frustrating at times, but that it does impact on my spiritual life. And it does, I remember there was one season where I just felt like there was a kink in the hose in my spiritual life. Like I knew God was there. I knew he loved me, but there was just this kink and I knew it was me. And I knew there was something going on in me. And it wasn't until my soul and body were like screaming at me, would you listen to me? That, and I went and, and went and saw the counsellor and psychologist that it was like, oh, that was the kink. That was the kink there from, and it was just stuff from my childhood that I didn't even realise that I had there. But when I started having the tools and started to process that and, and, and get it out, that that kink was there. And um, yeah, it was amazing. I think, I think it's a valid uh, tool to use to help bring wellness to your soul. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and I don't know where anyone's at tuning in, uh, but if you've ever thought um, that it might be valuable to you, you've got two pastors sitting here uh, saying that it worked for us. Uh, we had both very different journeys with it, um, but it helped um, yeah, just give you tools. And I have the, like this folder full of resources. I'm not sure if you have the same um, that, uh, that my counsellor gave me um, that I access even now um, mm. to help um, just, just be able to navigate that, that battle with the soul. Um, what are some other good habits that you have sort of implemented to look after your soul so that your spirit has the chance to rise and be captain? I think we need to, um, and it's back to my message again, we need to give our soul, we need rest. Rest is really important. And, um, you know, there's a saying, if you don't look after yourself, how are you going to look after other people? And sometimes we seem to strive and, and strive and just keep going and pushing and pushing and pushing. And our society tells us that. Our society um, even subconsciously tells us, you need to keep going, you need to keep going, you need to keep going. And I think that's where the self-care comes in. And listening sometimes to the soul and, and giving it that time to rest, to self-care, to, to look after ourselves. Yes, God wants us to love God and love others, but we've got to love ourselves as well. And sometimes we put ourselves last. And it's not about selfish, but it's about listening to the soul sometimes when it says, you don't have to be all things to all people, but you can actually stop, listen and rest um, and so doing things, something for you is actually a really healthy thing um, to actually do something that you enjoy, do something that brings you pleasure, a, a hobby, um, those kind of things. I don't know about you. What do you do for your soul? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I love uh, music. I love writing songs. Uh, so I've got like this little MIDI keyboard that I, I um, had for like two years and only just over the holidays figured out how to actually use it. Um, so <laughs> I've just started to use it and, uh, and I could do that for hours uh, and it's just good for me um, just to do some kind of creative outlet. Um, I love going for walks, uh, I love reading, all those kinds of things. I love having a night in where I just have junk food and I <laughs> am on my PJ, in my PJs on my couch can't do that all the time and I can just hear Pastor Ronan if he was here saying, no, 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 <laughs> no good. But, you know, every now and then it's okay. 
That's it exactly is right. Okay. And it is okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talking about body, um, uh, you know, we're talking about spirit, soul, body. How do we reset healthy habits holistically heading into this year, which is going to be different for every person. But when we talk about body, we talk about good sleep, nutrition, <laughs> nutrition. I just talked about junk food. Exercise slash movement, uh, listening to your body, those kinds of things when we talk about looking after your body. And again, like you said, some of these things dovetail into each other. Um, so when you're resting, when you're doing something creative, you might be going out on a nature walk. That hits all three, I think, yep. because you're physically moving, you're having a stillness of mind, and you're observing creation, which makes your spirit connect with God. So, you know, just go for walks, people, and we'll, be, we'll, we'll find a balance somewhere in there. Um, but when we talk about um, body, this amazing machine that God has made, so complex and so wonderful, how do you, uh, what sort of healthy habits do you have that look after your body particularly? I find with body, it's a lot about self-discipline because again, I love my chips, I love my chocolate, I love lollies, I love um, caffeine (laughs) Um, and so even with nutrition, I find it's a battle daily and it's about – and I think sometimes it's about the why. When you know why you're doing something, there seems to be an easier um, (laughs) way to listen to the spirit rather than the soul um, in that. But for me, it's – and it should never be about dieting. Dieting is not – help. it's not helpful because it's just a – kind of there it's and not then, lifestyle that, that's exactly right and so I think it's about going on your own journey of what your body needs um, and food is fuel that helps us get through the day and so making those healthy food choices for me to be the best and but best Christian in the day. I want to fuel myself well for now but in the future. And I think that's what we talked about before. Sometimes it's about the now. Um, And the truth is we do crave food at the moment and it does interconnect with the soul and the body because when the soul, when we get stressed and get anxious, the chemical cortisol is released into our bodies which actually makes us want to eat food because the body's going, well, I want this fuel to be able to fight because there's all these other things going on. So I find it is a, it is a battle um, for the exercise and for the nutrition every day. Some days I do better than others. Some days I can sit down and eat those chips and feel like this is the best thing in the world. But it's okay. <laughs> for, for the moment. <laughs> but, it, but it is okay. And yeah. that's the thing. Everything in moderation. And everybody's got to go on that journey for themselves. And, I mean, we've seen – and Pastor Brendan's shared his journey. Right. Um, but I know even for him, it's a daily choice. True. Again, it's a daily choice of making those choices. Are we going to get it right all the time? No. And there's some days I don't exercise because I don't feel like it. Right, right. Um, and that's okay too. So, um, so what are the habits though that mm. help you on those really hard days um, to go, you know what, it is a hard day mm. um, but I've put this habit in place yep. so that it's easier. It's not easy but it's easier because I've got this habit. So, so for yep. me, I don't w- – one of my very practical habits is in the morning I wake up and I do my devotions and I don't even ask myself, do I feel like exercising? exercising today like I don't even ask myself I just get up and I exercise um I do that like four times uh, a week four mornings a week um and so that's just one habit that I've gotten into don't even ask yourself the question because you're gonna say no (laughs) aren't you surely that's a reasonable but reasonable person's response I don't want to exercise so early in the morning um just let me sleep Um, but I just don't ask so that's one healthy habit for me well I find it healthy because it works for me um are they habits that help yeah. you go, no, I'm just going to do that? Yeah. Um, a healthy habit for me is if it's not in the house, then it won't be eaten. So food-wise, if there's not the the packet of chips in the cupboard, especially at night time, oh, the cravings are real, people. Um, if it's not there, then I can't eat it. It's like temptation. You know, temptation is there, that is easier. And so when it's not there, then it can't 
so that's just a habit I've got to of if it's not there, then out of sight, out of mind. And exercise for me is I, I probably I'm not as um, this is my set exercise time for the day, but I like to at least in some part of the day go there is some physical activity, whatever that looks like, whether it's outside playing with Lily, playing handball or whatever that looks like, or go for a run or go for a walk. But there's movement sometime during the day for and me. I, and I think that, you know, a habit doesn't necessarily have to be a rigid routine. No, that's right. Um, because sometimes you've got a flex. And if I have a breakfast um, of a morning, um, like going out for breakfast with somebody, um, then I won't exercise in the morning. Um, I'll do that at another time. So, you know, you've got to have that flex because it can't be rigid. I think with this life that we have, we can't necessarily be rigid all the time. But then there are times where, no, that's just going to happen. Yeah. And you've got to find what works for you so that you can live. Um, holy. Yeah. We are running out of time, or in fact, we actually are out of time. Um, I want to throw it to you one more time, though, as we've been talking about how do we reset healthy habits to live holy, spirit, soul, body. Um, out of the three, um, which one is the most challenging for you? Definitely the soul. The soul. Um, and I think because it does have such an impact, if it's not kept in check, it does have an impact. Like all three work together on the, on the body and in the spirit as well. And so for me, that's something that I need to be very conscious of. Um, what about for you? Yeah, I would think the same um, because I think, you know, our spirit is always wanting to connect with God. It doesn't, it's, you don't have to wind it up. It's just already like, yeah, I want to worship, I want to pray, I want to yeah. do those kinds of of things, um, but it's that soul um, which is impacted or, or sort of get, takes its um, or gives direction to the body. Um, so, yeah, soul definitely for me. Um, and I think, you know, I've been reassessing. I'm sure everybody has been over the month of January I've been, as we've been talking about reset, um, been uh, looking at different things I can do um, to, you know, be on track for 2022. Uh, and I hope that everybody's got something out of this series. I know I have. Um, and, uh, you know, you can watch back on the messages previously uh, if you uh, if you want to just meditate on those things. Um, but would you have any, th- any last thoughts that you want to share with anyone before uh, I'll get you to pray? Yeah. Um, in, I think it's John 8 verse 32, Jesus is talking and he said, the truth will set you free. And, you know, he's talking about the truth of who he is will set us free from, you know, the guilt, the shame, condemnation and all those things. But I think the truth will set us free is, can be adapted to many parts of our life. And I think for me, um, learning the truth of who I am, who God is, the body, soul and the spirit in so many ways has set me free. But the truth will set you free, but the truth will also tick you off sometimes. Because when you have a revelation of truth, it means that something probably needs to change. And uh, I don't particularly love change at times, but it means that something will have to change. And I think when we are talking about spirit, soul, body, when we're talking about sleep, nutrition, um, self-care, time with God, it it's challenging because when we're challenged, uh, it means there's time and effort that we need to put in to make that change. And, and I think it's being okay with um, having those, especially in resetting um, the truth will be challenging and it will mean change. So it means that I need to be um, deliberate. And so for this year, for me, it's really learning Again, like always, it's every day. What does today look like? And being so aware of the spirit, the soul and the body and being mindful of each of those and what, what I actually need for today. Not worrying about tomorrow, not worrying about yesterday, but being present in today um, I think is so key for the reset as well. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. And we could literally talk for a long time on this topic. Um, But, uh, you know, maybe it's something we get to dialogue and connects uh, when they kick off. Um, But why don't you pray uh, for us before we wrap up the service? Awesome. Thanks, Kez. It's been a privilege to um, be up here and talk this morning. And hopefully it was encouraging uh, for people. 
Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, that you, you love us so much. Your love is so for us. And I thank you, God, that every single day you provide for us everything that we need, God. But God, I thank you that you don't just leave us where we are, God, but you constantly want us to continue to grow in you, God. God, I thank you for the revelation that we are body, soul, and spirit, God, and that you created them all, God. And God, right now, I pray for every person that's hearing this, God, that you will speak to them, God, about the reset for them in 2022, God, and what that looks like for them, God. God, I hope that they have heard your truth speak into their spirit, God, that they will have a fresh revelation from you of maybe what they need to change in 2022, God. And God, it might hurt, it might be challenging, God, it might be faith steps, God, it might be changing things, God, but that we won't resist, but we will lean into you, God, and your grace and your hope and your peace and that love, God, going into this year, God, we don't know what 2022 will bring, but we do have a hope and a peace knowing that you are in our everyday, God. God, I thank you that you speak to us also individually, God, that we would hear, that we would listen, and that we would do what it is that you would ask of us, God, not out of fear or obligation, God, but out of knowing your love, for us, God, and I thank you for it. I thank you for the reset of 2022, God. We thank you for your goodness and grace today, God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It has been such a privilege being able to uh, to just chat and have a dialogue this morning. I did want to take a quick minute um, just to say, if you've got questions uh, about faith, I'm not sure um, who's tuning in this morning, uh, but perhaps, you know, uh, you wouldn't say that you have a personal relationship with Jesus, but you do have questions about faith. We would love to hear from you, so please reach out uh, on our socials. Uh, we would love to uh, get one of our pastors to make contact with you. If you know you're just uh, asking questions, uh, we want to be able to dialogue with you and um, start a journey with you uh, if you'd like that. So make sure you reach out to us. Hey church, we are going to be here in this place physically all together next Sunday, the 6th of February for our Origin Sunday and we just cannot wait um, to see you. So make sure you book online and we'll catch you next week.